Hello and welcome to Lit by Moonlight, where it's not a phase to live for 300 years and not be remembered by the people you talk to. This week, we're discussing The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. In 18th century France, Addie LaRue, a girl who wants to truly live, to see the world, to not be tied down to a husband and family life, makes a deal with the devil that could cost her the life she has. Don't misunderstand listeners. The cost of this deal isn't her life, but rather the burden of eternal life and of always being forgotten by everyone she knows. In a bookshop in Brooklyn, 300 years later, Henry Strauss remembers her. It's as if Addie and Henry have met their match, but only a lifetime will tell. Hello, I'm Caitlin, and I remembered to eat breakfast today. That's really good, Caitlin. Congratulations. I'm super proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Amberlynn, and I'm Caitlin, but in a different font, and that font is shitty. It's papyrus. <laughs> you know what? I don't think it's shitty, but I do agree that you are me in a different it's font. It's Comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I enjoy that. I did, too. So... <laughs> so what did you think of the world of Addie LaRue? Um, I thought it was really interesting. I really enjoyed it. Um, this book was structured in a way that was very like unique, in my opinion, from other books we've read in our fantasy series. We've been reading a lot of books where uh, there's multiple perspectives, uh, you know, like each chapter. But Schwab includes this uh, back and forth between times and places as well. Um, as this perspective that we get between Addie and Henry. So you've got 18th century France and 21st century New York City. Um, at the same time, we're kind of going back and forth between those two times in Addie's very long life, um, because obviously uh, she has eternal life, thanks to the devil. And um, that was like, really interesting to me, um, to kind of see how she got to this point, to see the way that she was forgotten by her own family, and now how she lives her life 300 years later, just kind of like going day by day, um, feeling very ever so slightly cursed uh, by that experience and, and kind of like just going through the motions now, but refusing to give up her life to the devil, uh, whose name is Look, 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought maybe, maybe it's just because we're at the end of our fantasy season and we've been reading so many different and wonderful worlds that we had to take in but I felt like it was really refreshing to read a book that took place in our world mm -hmm. and one that was like very familiar and like we know all the rules we know how the world works and the only difference in this book is that you know there's this whole thing where you can make a deal with the devil and do that so uh, it was it was just nice because I I love fantasy and like that it's my favorite genre because of the whole escapism mm. of it. But again, I haven't read this many fantasy books back to back, so it was just kind of nice to have like, oh, like I I know this world already. I don't need to really like think about where I am on a map or how what the rules yeah. are. All I had to know is that like, yeah, there's this really uh, evil guy who will take your soul and make your life shitty. Yes. <laughs> if you pray to him. Yeah. So don't do that. That was that was really <laughs> nice. Um, was there a specific moment in the book that hooked you? Um Yeah. Uh <laughs> it was when uh uh we meet Henry for the first time because he remembers her and I mean that is kind of like the whole hook of the book. Mm. But I and I know it's mentioned in like the synopsis of the book is literally like right on the cover of it but for some reason when I was reading it I forgot that that happens I forgot that Addie meets someone who remembers right. her and so when he starts to like when he tells her like no I remember you you tried to steal this book from my library I was like what oh my god he remembers her what's going on I need to know more so that that was mine how about yours I mean, well first like what an embarrassing way to be like remembered is like you steal a book from someone and you're like whatever i'll come back tomorrow and steal another or some shit and then you come back the next day and they're like hey i remember yesterday when you stole that book from me babe like that's so awkward <laughs> like, i thought it was so funny henry's like are you serious and she's like 
well, yeah, I just, I, I had this other copy at home, LOL. And he's like, are you shitting me right now? Because <laughs> like, you can, we had this conversation. Because you can be so good at lying to people who will just forget you immediately. But like, now it's like, yeah. it's someone remembers you and it's like, boop. <laughs> and I, <"Oop." laughs> That trick's not going to work anymore. <laughs> so that was the hook for me too. Um, and then um, it's kind of from that point, right, that the plot picks up. Um, we finally realize that someone remembers her um and i think that's the point where of course as view the reader really immediately like wait why why does he remember i want to know i want to know more how like how is this possible yeah. um so that was where that was a definitely a point in the book that wasn't definitely wasn't like um an adequate place to stop in fact it was a place where i was like okay this is the point where in the book where i know i'm going to keep reading and i'm probably going to be in this for a couple hours um yeah so that's what made that very cool i really i i think that was like that was awesome. Also, I don't know, I think just the aesthetic of, like, this guy working at a bookshop, like, <laughs> little bookshop. Boy. Yeah, I like, I like that we met him first, too, like, through Addie and how, like, I mean, that it could have been, like, your hint that, like, hey, hey, buddy, like, mm-hmm. takes your hand gently and tells you, this guy's going to be important, so pay attention. Right. <laughs> or, like, she enters the bookshop tries to steal the book he notices her and is just like what the fuck are you doing yeah. give it back yeah. and then i believe it's after she leaves the next chapter is from his perspective so i was just like who is this guy exactly why is he important yeah so that was it was it was really cool to just immediately like get into him and be like hey i wonder what's gonna happen here mm-hmm. exactly yes you have a favorite quote <laughs> um So, for me, it was, and this was, like, I think this is probably, like, everybody in the world's favorite quote if you've read this book because it's so good. It's when she first walks into this bookshelf that Henry, bookshelf, but when she first walks into this bookshelf. (laughs) When she runs into the bookshelf. She's very small. (laughs) Um, (laughs) She can't see very well. She can't see very well. She has to, like, climb up on it. She's, like, a little, she's just, like, you know, you know how men are always, like, I love short girls. Well, do I have a girl for you? She fits in a bookshelf. Um, anyway. Uh, So, it's when she first walks into Henry's bookshop, and there's this descriptive, uh, narrative that's, it's this essentially, um, what she needs are stories. Stories are a way to preserve oneself, to be remembered, and to forget. Stories come in so many forms, in charcoal and in song, in paintings, poems, films, and books. Books she has found are a way to live a thousand lives, or to find strength in a very long one. And that was, like, just, like, a whoo kind of quote, you know? Like, you read that, you're like, whoo! Yeah. Um, because, like, stories are, like, the most important thing in my life. Um, and I-, I put in the notes here, maybe besides, like, love and my partner and my cat and uh, Popeye's chicken sandwich. <laughs> and um, stories have been a form of self-preservation for me, like, my whole life. Um, both like telling stories and hearing stories that my elders have passed on to me about their elders, um, my ancestors, and then there's the stories that I'll get to tell to the new generations of her family and to my friends, um, both new and old and yet to be discovered. Uh, my dad's stories, for example, are the best stories. He's just such a good storyteller. Um, and um, I've always really admired that he he's just really good with like timing when he tells a story. Mm-hmm. And uh, with delivery, and he knows how to make you laugh, and he's always uh, had a way with words, which is something I really love, and I've tried to imitate in my own life. Um, and then just another thought on stories, uh, when I first got into my relationship with my partner, uh, one of the most exciting things for us both was the stories we were able to share with each other uh, about our lives, and that was made... Uh, more special by the fact that we come from different sides of the world, kind of like Addie and Henry. So um, stories are what really shape me in life. And that's, I really like, that's why that quote really resonated with me. Um, how about you? Yeah. Uh, well, that was, I had two and that was one of them. And uh, mm. that one, it just also resonated with me because books themselves have always been an escape for me. And it's um, how she says that books are a way to find strength in your life Mm -hmm. and books have been able to help me find strength in a way that even though everything around me seems to be going to shit um I can Mm -hmm. open up a book and just feel a little bit happier by the time I close it and it's it's always been a form of escapism for me and I don't know about you but we should start a podcast about books 
Just an idea I have. That's a really good idea. Yeah, that's a really, really good idea. We can idea. talk we about it, call it like, like later if you want. Lit like. by Moonlight or something. That's a good idea. What about like, yeah, I like this idea. Cool. We should do yeah. this. We can, we, can, we can discuss it later, but for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that name for a podcast. Um, I think like there are probably better names though. Like I was thinking maybe we could name this podcast Violating Community Guidelines with Brittany Broski and Sarah Shore. Oh yeah. I don't think that um, one's been used yet, so we should be in the clear. No. Anyway. So I like that quote. And uh, yeah. the other one I liked was um, when Henry is, he knows he's at the end of his time that he's been mm-hmm. given. And so he's saying goodbye to his friends, but they don't know it's goodbye. And he says, and this is what a goodbye should be. Not a period, but an ellipsis. A statement trailing off until someone is there to pick it up. It is a door left open. And I really liked this one because it really supported the idea of Addie's need for stories and how stories are a way to be remembered by others to preserve yourself. And I love that Henry says a goodbye should be an ellipsis for someone because it's a way for them to pick it back up. Like it reemphasizes how people are stories in their own right. And his story might have ended and he said goodbye, but his friends will be able to continue his story for him Mm -hmm. from all like the memories about him and whenever they talk about him. So I I just thought that was really cool. That is really cool. Wow. 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 So if you could have a song, uh, be inspired by you to help leave your mark on this world without the artist remembering what song would it be? Um, this might be solely because this song is the one that's currently stuck in my head, but it would be <laughs> Mamma Mia by ABBA. <laughs> because I like, even if it's not just that one, I want, I would want it to be like a song that just makes people feel immediate joy when the music starts. And Aww. like, like whenever I turn on that song, like immediately I'm just like, yeah, let's go. Like immediately like pumped up and like, I love singing along to it. It's always fun no matter how many times I hear it. So if I had to be a song in that way or like leave my impact in a song like that, I, I would want it to have that sort of feeling. Um, but I also said Dream Girl Evil by Florence the Machine um, because Aww. I haven't been the same since her new album dropped. And also the lyrics, um, kind of remind me of Addie as if she's like saying this to Luke like she says am I your dream girl you think of me in bed but you can never hold me and like me better in your head like it just there's other lyrics too but I'm just like this is a very like Addie feeling so I liked I I like that that one as well how about you that's awesome I think I add that to our playlist for this uh this week that goes with this book that you can find on our Spotify yes um dream girl even though it is um but so I'll be really frank. I did not leave you the question. <laughs> so so I just like was like hmm, a song that reminds me of this book is assuming what I'll have to put here. <laughs> um, so I put "I'll Be Seeing You" by Billie Holiday. Um, I, I, it, this is a song from the Notebook, and this book kind of gives me Notebook vibes. Um, and my interpretation of the song has always been when you lose a lover and then you see them again at all the places you used to go. Uh, but it's not really awkward or strange. It's really like a bit nostalgic and wishy-washy um maybe you think of them with fondness there's really no like ill will um i'd like to believe that's how Addie and henry will meet again someday perhaps um another yeah. song that kind of fits at five is um we'll meet again don't know where don't know when which i heard last night on tiktok um pertaining to some girl whose cat died and i was like well oh <laughs> it's time to stop being online for the day this is too much emotional turmoil for my body to handle it's time for tiktok um, pets to stop dying yeah it can be all tiktok cats should be immortal much like addy larue uh i'll say it yeah no i think that's fair but we will always remember them yes yes and we'll be seeing them <laughs> we um, will be seeing them i guess if i were gonna like i can't really if i was going to have a song um written inspired by me um i was thinking uh taylor swift's mirror ball um because it's kind of all about this girl uh or this person uh rather that that people pleases to keep you looking at them the lyrics are beautiful i am like a big people pleaser um but i've always considered myself a people pleaser and kind of like a like an ethereal like i i can do this type of way 
um, which is probably a little narcissistic, but aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, like, I don't know, it's just, that's a song that I've always resonated with a lot, and, like, I kind of consider it my theme song, <laughs> and um, that is a song that, I mean, if, if Taylor and I were besties, and then uh, she forgot about me, uh, and then she wrote that song about me, I'd be, like, a really happy girl. Yeah. Um, another one that I think potentially might fulfill that need is Matilda uh by Harry Styles um and you can do with that what you will so oh that's from his new one isn't it yeah yeah (laughs) no but it's it's not but we all know it is not about me it's probably about I actually don't know who it's about (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it's probably about Liam because no one likes him (laughs) for justifiable reasons these days (laughs) Um, anyway, God, I'm making a lot of enemies on this podcast. (laughs) Um, so tell me, um, then, like, what character would you write a book about from this lovely book, Caitlin? Hmm. If I had the skills to write a book about somebody, uh, in this book, I really enjoyed Henry. Uh, Mm. I, well, we first with the book uh, for obvious reasons we spend so much time with Addy before we even meet him that it, yeah. I feel like it could have been really easy to feel like who's this guy and why do I care <laughs> like because yeah. like yeah. sometimes I feel like with multiple perspective stories you get mm-hmm. like you spend so much time with a co- like certain characters and then all of a sudden a new one comes in and you're like who is this guy and why do I care right, um, right. and sometimes like it almost like I feel bad, but I immediately just have, like, a bad taste in my mouth because I'm just like, I don't care about you. I just want to get to the end of your chapter so I get to my person that I care about. Right. So I feel like right. that could have easily happened with Henry, but we meet him through Addie, and then we're given a chapter of him immediately after, and he's already intriguing. Like, you're kind of wondering, okay, where does he fit into the story? How does he... Um, how does he connect to Addie? Uh, how will, what does this mean for their relationship and this story that goes on? And I just, I immediately wanted to know more about him. And then the more we got to know him, the more I really did like him. Um, and all of the characters in this book are like this, but Henry felt the most real to me. Um, I feel like he was someone who I could easily know in real life. Um, just the just his mannerisms the way he thought and everything and I really I loved his honesty and how he just craved genuine friendships and relationships um Mm -hmm. obviously because his curse was that everyone he meets loves him no matter what and at (laughs) first it's just like cool but then you get sick of that after a while because there's nothing real and what's the point if it's not real so when he's able to have that with Addie you can see how much he cares about that and I just, I just thought that was a, uh, he was, he was very sweet to me, so I really liked yeah. him. How about you? Yeah. What's the, what's the character that you would, what, you, what, what? what? <laughs> I just burst out. When you started talking about, ah, you started talking about how like sometimes you read a book and like uh, some of the characters they show up in like a, a multiple perspective book and you're like, I don't really care about this character. Would it be? Fun? <laughs> <laughs> I was just being so rude to you because all your points were valid. But I was, the whole time you were talking, I was just thinking about like, what if you're reading, like somebody like really critically acclaimed, like somebody really likable, like their autobiography, like Pedro Pascal or something. <laughs> and you were like reading the book, and it was like all chapters of Pedro Pascal talking. But then you just like flipped to one page, and it was like Ted Cruz, <laughs> <laughs> like, like just like somebody really fucking unlikable. <laughs> like, like you're reading out, like Pedro Pascal in his childhood, and you flip to the next page, and it's like chapter five. I left Texas during a snowstorm because I didn't want to be there. <laughs> like, would you just die? Like, I'd be like, why are you here? What are you doing? Like, like you're reading like Mich- like I don't know like who's like a, who's like a really like who was like a likable person like um you're reading like Oprah's biography <laughs> and then like you turn the page and it's just like it's like Trisha Paytas or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gabby Hanna. <laughs> She's like, the, the first page is like, and that's when my talk show ended. And then you flip the page and it's like, you're all bullies. <laughs> Maybe I'm the monster that's been here all Maybe. along. <laughs> I 
call on my head to watch myself implode a pot without a potty I'd be the shot without take a load off my brain is posing but I'm searching for the anecdote and every time I find out my defense will scream oh no you don't whoa <laughs> so what I'm finding out today is that Amberlynn is actually secretly a Gabby Hanna stan oh my god <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a Gabby stan twitter like fighting with people I thought you were gonna say I'm a Gabby stana <laughs> Caitlin, you do realize she's going to come after us for this. She's going to find out about this in some niche way, and she's going to... It's fine. She's going to come after us. It's fine. Another enemy for my list. (laughs) Just add her to your list of enemies. (laughs) All my fans. Um, So, um... Anyway! (laughs) Um, so... I also said Henry, um, because, uh, I mean, there was just one line that, like, kind of provoked an early life crisis for me, yeah. um, and it's when Schwab writes, blink and you're 28, and everyone else is now a mile down the road, and you're still trying to find it, and the irony is hardly lost on you, that in wanting to live, to learn, to find yourself, you've gotten lost. And I just, like, really deeply related to that. Yeah. Um, that not just the desire to be loved, but also the panic of constantly running out of time um, and feeling that you haven't have truly lived in the moments where you were supposed to be, that you haven't truly been present because you've been so frightened of, like, not living. And I was like, damn, Henry, uh, that is, <laughs> that's a little deep, buddy. Uh, I might have to highlight this line and bring it to therapy next week. Yeah, as a couple of girls who's... Uh, when you know the time in your life when you really start you're supposed to start like getting out there and starting your life and Mm -hmm. it got ruined because of covid (laughs) this Mm -hmm. one really hurt because i'm just like it's okay henry you have time and i'm like it's okay caitlin you have time (laughs) it's gonna be okay (laughs) i kind of when i read that i'm like i just have to keep moving on and reading and not stop and think about this or i will have another crisis (laughs) No, like, it's scary, too, though, because, like, I mean, Henry, obviously, he doesn't have a lot of, at this point in the book, because of the deal he made with the devil, he doesn't have a, light, a lot of life left in yeah. him. But I think he's also very young. He's 28. And it's so interesting to me that I think, like, we've kind of evolved into this culture where, like, at 24, which is how old you and I are, um, it's easy to feel like your whole life has passed you by and, like, you're old now because of, like, just the way things kind of move now. Right. Like, it feels like the moment you turn 21, you're a senior citizen. And it's, like... well. I feel like the continual thing in our lives has been to fight back against that idea and just continue to be the young people that we actually legitimately are. Yeah, and it's definitely getting better, but there's definitely some sort of standard where, like, everyone's like, by this age, you have to do this, and by that age, you have to do that, and if you don't, you're a failure. And you're like, I'm seven. (laughs) (laughs) Literally. Literally. (laughs) Sometimes I'm like, I am so close. Like, I am on the cusp of halfway to 30 and I don't know if I can like I'm not ready for that if you could <laughs> I you know what I'm not measuring out my life and I've mm-hmm. we're just gonna not do that no 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 um uh, we'll bring it next week to therapy because this is not a time to have a crisis I this is like a sidebar but I saw a plugin for notion which is a task management platform that Caitlin and I use for to manage this podcast uh um and it was like a notion, like a plugin you could get that would tell you how to count down the rest of the days in your life from like no. five or eight. Oh my six. god, no! And I was like, why would anybody want that? Why would like, you I want don't that? Know. <laughs> and it's like you have this many days left to not fuck it up. Like I, I'm really good. <laughs> Caitlin, what? What just happened? <laughs> he just climbed up right up in the hamper. He said, this, "I gotta, I gotta be in there right Manny now." Manny said, "I'm having a early life crisis right now." He, yeah, I think he heard us talking, and he was like, "Wait a minute, I only have well, how long is how long is seven in cat years?" <laughs> he got up to get his calculator. Yeah, he was. <laughs> it's in the hamper for some reason. <laughs> That's where cats keep their calculators. In case you're wondering why they're always trying to get in your hamper. Um, what, what, what book are we talking about again? <laughs> um. Yeah, Notion shouldn't have that. Just that just feels like a ex- just. It's like Notion looked at it. You and was like, "Would you like some more anxiety for your life on top of your other anxiety that you didn't ask for?" <laughs> Here's how long you have left to live. 
what's even scarier to me is it was like a plugin, so it was probably something that like an independent developer made just for funsies, like some girly at home with like a color coded agenda, which is like me. Yeah, Don't even know, it was just me, but but who was also like, let's be productive all the time, you know? And I just can't, I can't live girl, like take that. Girl, take a nap. I can't live like that. Yeah, take a da- take a damn nap. <laughs> damn. Um, Welcome to Live by Moonlight. <laughs> take a damn nap. <laughs> take a damn nap. Not- That's what the moonlight's for, for fuck's sake. Yeah, but not until you finish this episode, please. Yes, which take is a nap on our time again. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the invisible life of Addie R- Larue. So, getting back on track, yes. was there a character that you would like to forget the moment you leave the room? This is so funny to me because it's Henry again. <laughs> like, um, I like I, I'd say that I have a love hate relationship with this character, but I, I'm like, it is a complicated one because as much as I appreciated how relatable he was, I felt like his character arc didn't really move me as much as I wanted it to. Like, there was probably some potential there to like push a little harder on that yeah. um i don't know there was like a I, I i liked him as the book went on but in the very beginning when you well when, when you find out about the deal he makes with the devil um it's when he proposes to tabitha and she rejects him um and it sends him on kind of a bender like justifiably so and obviously his irrational choice to make a deal with the devil is what costs him everything and the intent is for him to learn from that choice by the book's end but there were just times of, uh, like when i don't know, like i was just like like your internal monologue about not feeling adequate for anyone in your life is valid as shit like same girl um but also like create found family and find new friends if that's how it is like like your family you think your family thinks you're inadequate go like find new fucking family you're like 28 you've lived by like you don't you're not like yeah Yeah. (laughs) so i was like frustrated at that point but then i was also like you know people are people like humans are humans they do what they do you know but that was, like, my biggest quarrel. Um, how about you? Who who really got you in a tizzy? Uh, the character I would like to forget the moment I leave the room is that girlfriend that Henry had who immediately started setting fire to his ex's stuff. Because, <laughs> 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 like, I didn't have any character that, like, I didn't like, per se. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Luke for obvious reasons. But <laughs> there was just Ooh, something yeah. about this girl. And I can't even remember her name. It was, like, Vanessa or... Isabel or something I don't know but yeah she like she tells it now at this point Henry has this curse and um so she loves him because that's what like that's what the curse does like she just loves him because that's his effect on people and yeah so she was just like I love you and then like two minutes later she's like starts setting fire to tab of the stuff that's still in Henry's apartment and he's like what are you doing and she's just like well, you gotta let go, <laughs> like, basically, and it was just, the it just made me so uncomfortable, the way she was just like, it's me now, let's forget her, and Henry was still clearly, yeah. like, was just dealing, dealing with a lot and not ready to move on, and uh, just the way, like, he was just like, this is moving so fast, and now you're burning her things in my apartment, what are you doing? <laughs> right, right, like, she, she made that choice for him, and it wasn't her choice to me. Right, yeah. It was, like, it, it was a choice, and it was the wrong one. It is iconic. It is iconic. Yeah. Wow. I mean, like, yeah, like, I don't know. I feel like any type of partner who's, like, not going to let you have your space and time to, like, heal from things, but also, I don't know. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still thinking about it. Wait, I'm still processing. She really did light all this stuff on fire. <laughs> she and, like, did. It was like he went to take thinking, a shower, like, and he's like, I smell smoke. And then he came out, and there's just a fire in the sink, like. And, like, part of me was like, yeah, oh, yeah, it was the curse. Like, she didn't know it was, she probably wouldn't have done that anyway, like, if she yeah. was, like, a normal person. I don't... But the other part of me is also like, that is a choice. Like, I don't care who you are. I don't care what spell you're under. That is a, that is a choice you made. You made that choice. And a, and a huge fire, uh, uh, violation. So. Yeah. Girl was ready to commit arson for the man she just said I love you to. That's kind of hot, though. I don't know. Like Literally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hot good for, good for her. crazy girls are hot I don't know anyway um so tell me like a, a peak you had about this book we're doing peaks and valleys peaks now peaks and a valley well my first peak would be that it was character driven um yeah I really really enjoy character driven stories um I really did like the story between Addie and Henry here I love that we got to see just any story where we can just see two people come together not just for love and because of plot but because they're able to Mm. learn from each other and like Mm. help each other because I feel like that's kind of who we all are 
in real life is that like we all learn from the people that we're surrounded by um I love that Addie was able to learn like the what it means to be love um and what it means to be human through Henry because she's mm-hmm. lived this long life like she hasn't really she's had basically have had many one night stands and that's and that's yeah. all she's ever able to have and by the time you wake up in the morning they don't know who she is so it's just which is just really heartbreaking so the fact that she was able to have something that was sustainable through Henry was really nice and she starts to like almost f- I can't remember if it's like she feels like she isn't human or if, or if she's told she's not human because of how long she's yeah. lived but she was able to feel like herself again because she was able to have like a normal relationship with someone uh she says that love is messy it's hard it was wonderful and strange and frightening and fragile so fragile it hurt and it was worth every single moment i just i really like that because like love isn't easy it's something that you're gonna work at but like you both work at it for each other and i just feel like that's Mm -hmm. i really liked how she did that with Henry and I also really love how Henry listened to Addie and like helped her I love that even though he didn't have a lot of time he wanted to spend it helping her tell her story Mm -hmm. since he was able to um and I love that with his time with her he was able to see that there was so much more to life than the little bubble that he kept himself in um that ultimately he found the strength to keep going and um because earlier he did not want to so it was yeah. it was really nice uh, to see a character like find that and be like, yeah. oh, there's more here and I can have that. Oh, so that was really nice. Yeah, that's really profound. Thank you. <laughs> what was your first peek? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm such a douche. <laughs> that was so profound. Like, I'm so I was being so serious. I know too, you were. Like, I was. <laughs> sometimes I like look back on things I say and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Oh, so douche what was your boy. first peak <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i'm gonna go eat sand um so uh for me it was the writing it was incredible i think uh Schaub's writing style is just like sexy as shit um yeah. it's very smooth like a nice coffee in fact uh this would be a great book to read in a coffee shop on a fall day i think um it just goes down like really smooth like a nice brandy you know mm-hmm. um and I really just, like, liked the aesthetic of the book, like, bookshops, like, constellations, a cat named book, sleeping with various hot men and women. I love the cat named 18th, book. Yes! 18th century France, artists and paintings, a wooden ring. And I actually want to touch base on the uh, the paintings and the artists for a, a second, yeah. but I'm realizing now that that might actually be my second peak, so we'll come back okay. to that. Um, I want to hear about your second peak first. Um... My second peak was that I really loved how this book was able to illustrate the impact that we as yeah. individuals have on each other, because oh. I know I kind of talked about this, I think it was in uh, We Hunt the Flame, but I love that um, when we meet people, we all leave our own mark on each other. Oh, no matter yeah. what, I always feel like, you know, there's people in your life that you know them like maybe you are friends in college and then like you want to stay in touch but like there's nothing bad between you it's just that you were together for this part of your life and now you're both doing your separate thing but it's isn't that really cool Mm -hmm. that you got to be in each other's lives at that point and so I always Mm -hmm. like I like that because it's like oh these people were this chapter in my story and like they got to be there and I'll always have that like there's shows that I watch now because of a friend from college or there's like music that I listen to from like a past relationship or just like phrases that I have of like the people who I'm around and it's I really think it's cool that like we're all kind of made up of the people that we surround ourselves with and this book really illustrated that especially with Addie and how she's able to leave her marks um with paintings and music and stories and just how even if the people didn't remember her they all were inspired by her and I just I just thought that was a really really cool element yeah oh it is it's like it is it is a cool element like oh it's something that I think about a lot too like oh you know in my own like personal brain if it were like a scrapbook you know there there are people that I don't (laughs) speak with anymore but that I still love so much I had a friend um from high school contact me on my birthday 
um, and just say, like, I still remember your birthday, I still remember, like, your childhood home address and your phone number, and I just think that's really cool that those things, like, stuck with her for so long. Yeah. Um, And, like, you know, we, like, talked, and it was just, like, nice because... I feel like um, those are the things you don't forget. Like, I definitely forget, don't forget, like, my childhood best friend's phone numbers or, the, like, their addresses, and, like, I still have the pictures of them, and, like, we don't see each other anymore, you know, we're, like, very different lives because of one reason or another, and it's nothing personal, it's just the way kind of life goes. Yeah. But you still look back with, like, some fondness about them, um, which is, I think, why I kind of, like, took, resonated with that Billie Holiday song because it, you really, like, sometimes you see something in public and you're like, oh, my God, Hi. Because sometimes you see somebody in public from high school and you're like, oh my god, run, run, run. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes you see somebody from high school or college or, you know, like even earlier than that and you're like, oh my god, hey, you know, yeah. and it's, a nice, it's a nice feeling. It's a really nice feeling. And I think that kind of um, works itself into to, uh, what my second peak was. And, and that's um, the way that like um, paintings and music and other archived art was used to kind of tell Addie's story. Um, you get these little... Um, like vignettes within the book of like different art and music that was inspired by Addie throughout the book, um, which is really interesting to me. I think that this book's emphasis on art um, and like each person in the book had their own artistic and creative value was really special to me because that's something I think I'm rediscovering with myself as I'm coming out of a degree in public administration. <laughs> so like that's really nice. Like that I, that really spoke to me. Um, I absolutely love the expose pieces of art in the past 300 years that encapsulated Addie's essence, even though no one can remember her. It's really fascinating. Uh, you were going to say something. Uh, I really, I really liked, um, like, at the, I think it was a, at the beginning of every part of the book, because there's, like, part one, part two, whatever, there's a yeah. n- different sort of medium, like, it starts with the sculptures of the bird taking flight, and then there's uh, a painting of star like it's like a star but it's like the seven stars on her face and there there's like the music and I just thought that was a really cool element so not only like were we being told through the story that like these people these artists and these singers were inspired by her but that we kind of got to see it and see how yeah. like like separately from Addie's story how like in the world they're like yeah there's this really cool painting but we have no idea who it was inspired by and neither does the artist but isn't that cool and like but it's addy and like we got to see that from her so that 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 was really cool yeah i'd love to read more books in this like particular genre of like fantasy but real right um where it's like oh like there's fantasy but here's proof of how it was real because that really gets me going like it's, yeah it's like it could yeah. be real you're right like like it could be real like maybe not but like also there's just an element of it that's like yeah, like, this is believable because it's so niche, like, you know, and I like that, um, a lot. Uh, did you have, like, a, a valley in this book? It, I feel bad because it's not, like, really a valley of the writing, it's just a valley of, like, my own interest while reading the book. Um, yeah. Because there wasn't anything that stuck out where I'm just like, ugh, I don't like this, but... Right. And it, it could be because I feel like every time I do a valley, I'm like, it's not the author's fault, but I didn't like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, 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 but it's just me. It, it's, it's just me. me. I am, I'm the valley. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it me? Am I the valley? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I also I use the audiobook to read this book, and um, sometimes my brain doesn't always focus on everything. But like, I was I was able to focus on most of this book, but. The deeper mm. we got into the story, the less I cared or paid attention to the parts where it would flash back to Addie's life mm. before. Especially the like it made sense in the beginning and even in the middle where like we're still learning exactly the rules of her curse and like how this might work with Henry and like I really I yeah. did I did enjoy like reading like, oh, here's that artist that she met and here's that time she spent with them and then here's how they were able how she was able to leave her mark I really liked all that but like the Mm. further we got I got into the book and the more it kept flashing back I'm just like I don't I don't really care anymore because I'm more interested at this point how she's going to continue on with Henry how what like what does her curse mean with her life with Henry and how could they possibly, could they like reverse it? Could they get rid of it? Like, how are they going to do that? So if it, when it, like it, 
towards the end it flashbacks with her time spent with Luke when they got like more intimate and it got more into the story of like the toxic relationship that she was in with him and yeah I'm just like this is interesting but ultimately I don't care because I know we're just going to get to the point where um like it just kind of it's just like kind of fluff to be like look this is going to make this seem more important but right. as a plot and as a whole it doesn't completely change because this is going to happen no matter what so why am I even wasting my time reading this part so right. that that was my valley um again could have just been a me thing because I'm just like I don't care I'll get back to her and Henry but <laughs> <laughs> uh what was your valley yeah this is my valley or me thing I think this is a me thing too <laughs> but I just like I thought Addie's character was interesting but there were times when I felt like she was not super like flushed out um like I don't want to say she had no personality but I did feel like there were, it was like a lot more room for her to be more than like a 300 year old French lady <laughs> like um, this book was super plot relationship driven from my point of view, um, so it's not like a huge deal. Um, but like sometimes Henry would be like, "She's so great, like she's so different," <laughs> and I was like, "Yes, she might have fucked Napoleon Bonaparte." <laughs> like, okay, like how else? Um, like not to go like all social video too on everybody, but I don't know. I I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, I I don't know how to like process what I was feeling in my mind when I read this, but. Um, sometimes you read a book and it feels like the character has been fleshed out in a way that doesn't have enough dimension to cater to the complexity of womanhood, <laughs> um, which is fine because not every book has to, but it does have enough dimension to cater to the male gaze. And, um, uh, I mean that like coffee shop girl kind of sense, like men love a mysterious Blake Lively looking girl in a oversized sweater and mixing her coffee in the corner of a Starbucks and reading Heart of Darkness <laughs> by Joseph Conrad. And they love going up to said woman and saying, did you know that Heart of Darkness was Francis Ford Coppola's inspiration for Apocalypse Now? And they love when the girl says in a playfully light French accent, I did not. Would you please explain it to me now? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's, those are my thoughts. Um, no, like, I, I, I thought it was a really That's good so book. so specific. Um, I, it is highly specific, but there are times when this movie reminded me, or this book reminded me a little bit of Age of Adeline, which is a movie with Blake Lively um, that has, like, a very similar plot line. Um, oh yeah, I started watching that movie, I think with you, but then I stopped watching it because the dog died and I didn't want to watch it anymore. Oh, I don't think it, I think, I don't, re, I don't, I like have a really, I don't remember what happened, honestly. I remember starting it and being like, what's going on? But like, it was kind of the vibe I got where it was like, she, like the girl, she was cool, but like, I don't like, I liked Addie, but I felt like. The thing, the thing that I treasure about, say, like, Hafsa Faisal's writing or Lee Berdugo's writing is that their characters, like, the woman, the women in their books are funny, and not every woman has to be funny. Like, I don't want every woman to get up on a pedestal, and I don't want to, like, make them dance for me, but there were times when I was like, I wish I, like, I wish there was, like, a little more, like, internal, I feel like, I wish I felt more personally connected to Addie as a person, and, like, I didn't, Yeah. and that was, like, fine, but then I was also just, like... I don't know, like, I don't, I'm not, like, resonating with her as a character a lot, and that's okay, that's not my job, um, but I was just like, hmm, like, this girl looks like she, this girl seems like she'd wear oversized sweaters and just be, like, like, have a little coffee book that says live freely, and just, like, you know, and that's okay, like, I'm not, it's like, I just wanted more dimension for her, you know, so yeah, that was my valley, um, none of it made sense, I'm assuming, because I'm burning out hardcore, but um, <laughs> it's a Saturday, and I worked like t- twenty-four hours straight at least three days this week. So yeah, that was insane. I'm zipping and zooping. Um, Caitlin, yeah, that's me. What curse would you prefer to have? To be loved by everyone when they see you, or to be forgotten the moment you were away from someone? Well, they're both horrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, on the surface level, if we're talking like just to be loved by everyone or be forgotten the moment you're away from someone I would choose be loved by everyone uh because the thought of being alone and forgotten terrifies me yeah but if we're talking about like their actual curses of like Addie being immortal but never being remembered and Henry literally having a countdown like the notion app gives you 
to the end of your life, um, I would have Addie's because I already have so much anxiety with time as it is. Um, yeah. I I feel like if I knew the moment my life was going to end, I would just spend the, my entire life just like dreading that moment and I wouldn't be able to actually live my life to its full potential given that yeah. and that's why we're not supposed to know at least with Addie like yeah she's immortal and yeah no one knows her but she still gets to experience a whole bunch of stuff and she has time to do yeah. that she has time to go places and see things she never could before and like like she talks about like when she was living um when she was in France uh she never thought that she would see the ocean or Paris was the only city oh, yeah. that she knew but now she got to see the ocean and now she's in New York City and I'm sure she's been like a whole bunch of other places and I just think at at least she gets to go and do exciting things whereas like with Henry it's just like all right you got a year good luck <laughs> and like you can't really do a lot yeah. of that and um Addie is at least able to learn how she can use her curse to her advantage and be mm-hmm. like okay I found these loopholes I can leave marks on these places um yeah, no one knows me, but I can steal things in order to live and survive and go places. And, like, I I would just rather have hers in that. And she can, and when she has, feel like she's done enough, uh, she can always be like, okay, I'm ready. And at least she got to do the things that she wanted to. And whereas with Henry's, it's yeah. like, there's a lot you can do in a year, but not enough for a lifetime and I just feel like that's just as terrible and horrible no good very bad yeah. life so <laughs> it is a no good, very bad how life. about you I feel like yeah like exactly like there's nothing authentic about Henry's experience like he doesn't have to get he doesn't get to have authentic experiences with people like Addie does even if they forget her immediately she still gets to have like she still gets to, she still gets to experience them fully without that guise of like this person seeing the person that they love when they see you, um, and also I don't know I like this is like so stupid because like I think at, at the end of the day feasibly and vulnerably it would be very sad for everybody I know and love to forgive me, but also I like being mm-hmm. alone like so if I had to choose I'd probably go with that one because it's like. If I, if I had Henry's court curse, but my family remembered me, they would never be able to experience me right. authentically again. So it's almost like the same thing. It's like, you know, you never... Either way, you don't get to have an authentic experience with your family yeah. ever again. So would you rather that they love you with absolutely no authenticity, or would you rather that they not know you at all? Like, that's, a, that's something that I thought about a lot. And also, I think that the lovely thing about her life is it is eternal and she gets to travel. It reminds me a little bit of, like, the very end of The Good Place, uh, yeah. no spoilers, but you kind of, there's, like, this, like, opportunity to do everything that you've ever wanted to do in The Good Place, um, which is a great show, uh, that I, I think, like, I don't know, that, that, that I like about Eternal Life, even if it yeah. forgets you, um, but, yeah. I, I was also really feeling too. very much Good Place vibes with that, too, so I'm glad you said that, because I'm just like, oh yeah. my god, it's like when they did that, so... On a scale of one to seven stars in the constellation on Addie's face, what do you rate oh. the invisible life of Addie LaRue? Um, quick sidebar, it's really cool that she has like a constellation on her face. Like that's a cool yeah. that's a cool character trait. Like that's it's awesome. really cool. Um, like I have freckles, but they don't like they're not in a cool constellation. What the heck? Yeah, and I have a birthmark on my eye and I think it looks a little <laughs> bit like an elephant. That's cute. Yeah. Very fun. Not in a fun way, though. Like a charging elephant. He's really angry. <laughs> um, what did she do to him? <laughs> lived too long. <laughs> Didn't sleep enough. <laughs> Ate too much. He's your sleep paralysis demon. Yeah, literally. He's like, he's the reason I have narcolepsy. Um, so uh, I said five out of seven. I'm probably going to go like 5.5 out of seven because um, it was good. It just, like, didn't jump out. It didn't, like, jump out to me in the way that, say, like, Hafsa's uh, book resonated with me last week or another right. book I read recently that really resonated with me. So, like, I don't want to compare books, but, like, it was just, like, it was probably just, it was, like, a really, really good book, but it was also, like, not something that will be living in my head rent free for the next couple of months in the way that, say, like, any of the shows I've been watching recently have and not okay <laughs> with me. But I did enjoy Correct. it. Um, how about you? 
Oh, I gave it a seven out of seven. Now this is a really big deal because perfect scores yeah. are hard to come by for me, even though I'm very, very biased. Yeah. <laughs> so I really liked this book so much. It really it's it, it was different from a lot of the books that I usually read and that we have read on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Um it also I I gave it a seven out of seven because of just how much it made me think yeah. while reading it. And, like, I feel like it was a really good perspective on life and how we all can individually leave our mark on this world with the time that we have mm. here and, like, how precious it, precious it truly is and how we shouldn't take it for granted. And, like, it just it just made me think a lot of, like, yeah, I don't want to live forever because, like, I would love a long life, but forever is too long. And, mm. like, I feel like because we can't live forever it makes what we do with the time that we have all that more meaningful yeah and um also this book made me sob my eyes out (laughs) (laughs) at the end I finished full disclosure I finished it this morning (gasps) and I was in bed and like what really what made me cry was I mean already I was emotional over the ending because Addie ultimately um gives herself up for Henry so like she ties herself to Luke and it's like you can have me as long as you spare his life yeah so Henry's able to live his life fully um and she asks him to remember her and so Henry has been so he's been writing all of her memories as she tells him and he writes a book and the book is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Yeah. And I would just, I felt like that was just so perfect. I was just like, oh, this book is the book. Yeah. And like, I was really emotional about it. And then Addie is like in a bookshop in London and she sees, and like everybody's talking about the book. The book was so popular. So like her mark is being left on this world through so many people now. And she opens up the book and the dedication is I Remember You. And it made me fucking just lose my mind. I was just like, oh my god, I did this for her. Like, it was just, it, there's, like, the love that he had for her and that the fact that he did this for her, it just, oh my god, it made me cry. And I will be linking the pictures I sent Ember in this morning <laughs> in the bio. <laughs> I, I sent those pictures and then I said, I am unwell. Yes, she was unwell. <laughs> And she was, said the narrator. (laughs) And she still is. (laughs) I mean, it's, like, an incredible act of love to do that, to, like, take all these stories and publish them, because it also allows other people to... Her name is out there, a name she's never been able to write before. It's out there, and so are her stories, and now no one can take that away from her because of what he did, which is... Wow. Yeah, and I really really like the ending, too, because it was open-ended, but not in a way where you felt like there's no conclusion but in a way of like there's hope yeah and i like it when there's um books like that where you get closure but there's still hope in their future so like addy was like yeah i made this deal with luke now but he doesn't like but she found another loophole and basically like once he is no longer wants her she's free yeah and i just have the hope that someday like she'll get to henry again and I don't, I don't need to read another book about it, um, and because like I think that's the um, wonderful thing about open-ended books is that like we don't always need a sequel. Yeah. So I, I very much love the ending of it, and it, all in all, yeah, seven out of seven, ten out of ten, love the book. Snaps. Snaps for for Caitlin's um, Caitlin's reading of the book. Thank you, thank you. Profound. Thanks for listening to our discussion of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Tune in next time when we start our next season of Lit by Moonlight with Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Yeah! P&P! <laughs> P&P, baby! <laughs> <laughs>